Okay. All right, so question number seven reads, solve for u where u is a real number. Okay, so that means that uh, we need to find the values of u which will satisfy this equation. Okay, uh, but it's kind of difficult here. You guys can try using some guesswork and say, oh, what if u was like one or u was like four? Well, they equal the same thing, but we're going to try to do this more systematically. And the way that we do it is we isolate for the variables of u, and by isolating for them, we have a clearer picture on how we can solve for u. Okay? So the first thing that we need to do is that we need to isolate for u. Uh, we see here that we have a 3u that's under a square root bracket, so we need to remove the square root bracket first, right? Uh, so the way that we can remove it is we can square both sides. Okay? So we're going to raise both sides by the power of 2. Now, um... You might be fooled to square just u and 2 and leave like that. So if we were to square both sides, this is not what to do, okay? So you cannot do this because this is not equivalent. So you can't just do u squared times minus 2 squared equals 10 minus 3u squared, okay? This is not the same. These do not equal the same thing, okay? You cannot square both sides like that. When, we, when I mean by squaring both sides, you have to do it like this, okay? So u minus 2 bracket squared like this, okay? So this is equivalent to this. Oh, um, I should put a square root bracket first. And then the bracket around. Okay, so this is what they're equivalent to, okay? So you cannot just square the individual terms itself. You have to square the whole term u minus 2, okay? So by doing so, we get uh, u minus 2 squared equals to 10 minus 3u. Okay, so now we have a problem here. Um, we have a u minus 2 squared, so we have to expand this. So if we expand it, we get u squared minus 4u plus 4. Okay, and now by doing so, we can isolate for our 3u here. So if we move uh, 3u over to the other side, we get neg negative u plus 4 equals to 10. Okay, so now we have moved all our u's to the other side, and we can now evaluate where we want to move on here. Okay, so we can move the constants to the right side and solve for u, but that's still a little bit difficult, right? Because we have to use some guesswork and be like, okay, so what values of u will make this left-hand side equal to 10, right? So that's still kind of hard. But if you can notice here, you notice that the left-hand side is a quadratic function, right? So... An alternative way of finding the solution to the quadratic function is to find the zeros to this quadratic function. So let's set this quadratic function to equal to zero. So we're going to move this 10 to the right-hand side by subtracting both sides by 10. And if we do so, we get this quadratic function. And now we can find the zeros to this quadratic function. And by doing so, we solve the for the values of u because that's what exactly what we're solving for. So let's factor this. Okay, so let's find the factors for our coefficient of our leading term, which is 1, so it's going to be 1 times 1. And let's find the factors for our coefficient uh, of our constant, right, which is negative 6. So we're going to do negative 3 and 2. And if we cross multiply this together, we get negative 3 plus 2, and that equals to the coefficient of our middle term, which is 1. Negative 1. Okay, so now we're going to use these as our factors. So we have u minus 3 times u plus 2 equal to zero. And now, based on our previous uh, questions, we're going to find the zeros, which is u minus 3 equal to zero, and u plus 2 equal to zero. <clears throat> so this equals to zero when u equals to 3, and this equals to zero when u equals negative 2. So we have found our values that will make our top equation true, which is u minus 2 is equal to square root of 10 minus 3u when u is equal to 3 or negative 2. Okay, so that is the solution to our problem. So the junior tutor alternatively used the quadratic formula to find uh, the zeros. Uh, I would not do this for a, such a simple quadratic function, but it is, it's, it's a different method. Uh, I would mostly use a quadratic formula to f solve for zeros when you're not able to factor your quadratic function. Um, because you end up with these nasty square root uh, things that you need to calculate, 
and it's just a lot of uh, brute force calculation to find your zeros. Well, this one's a little bit more intuitive. Okay, so this solution is correct. Good work. All right. So let's move on to question.